When we look at our lives and the many ways in which, O oh God, you have shown up, the many ways in which you have saved us, the many miracles, O oh God, that you have performed in our lives, O oh God. O oh God, our hearts cry out, Hallelujah. When we, O oh God, like the, like the whole hymn writer said, when we count our, our blessings, O oh God, we can name them one by one. And it will surprise us what the Lord has done. Thank you, O oh God, that you've never failed. And so we will pray today, O oh God, that even as we get around your word, as we, we as we fellowship together tonight, we pray, O oh God, that you would speak to us. Speak to us, Lord, we pray. We declare an open heaven. We declare our hearts are open. We declare, O oh God, our minds are open to receive the word of the Lord. We declare, O oh God, that we are ready, O oh God. And even, O oh God, let your word, O oh God, have its perfect work in us. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I'm going to ask Lorenzo just to lead us in a word of prayer tonight. Bless you. Father, we come before you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior. We thank you, God, yes, because Lord. you're a never-failing yes, God. You're a God that answers us, oh God, in times of need, oh God. In times of want, oh God, you're always there, oh Father God. You said you'd never leave us nor forsake us, oh God. And today as we stand, oh God, we stand in authority over all things, Lord. Knowing, oh God, that we are your sons and daughters, oh God. That, Father, you said, Lord, you take care of us, oh God. You said we never lack, oh God. You said ask and we will receive, oh Lord. You said knock and you shall open, oh God. And today, Father, we stand, oh Lord, on those promises. And we stand on your word, oh God. Because you are faithful, oh God. You, Father, God, can do extraordinary things, oh God. You're a God. God of signs, wonders, and miracles, oh God. A God that has done it, oh God. A God that is still doing it today, oh God. And a God that shall do great and mighty things in the days and the months and the years to come, oh God. We know, oh Father God, that the atmosphere has set right now, Lord, where you are calling people, Lord, unto you, Lord, to serve you, to worship you, Lord, to surrender unto you, oh Father God. And today, oh Father God, as we surrender, Lord, we ask, Father, that you take control, Lord, that you do what you you called us to do, O oh God. And today, Father, we know, Lord, that you are in control, O oh God, over every situation, O oh God, over everything, O oh God, in this world, O oh God, over every of every leader, O oh God, over every government organization, O oh God, over every medical field, you are in control, O oh God. That only you have the answers, O oh God. That you would give people the wisdom, O oh God, to do great and mighty things, O oh God. If only God, they would turn to you, Lord. Humble themselves and pray, Lord. You said you'd hear from heaven, oh God. And today we thank you, we love you, and we honor you, Lord, because there is no one like you, Father. We give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. God bless you. For those that have come out, for you that are following us on Facebook, uh, it's just load shedding here. Uh, and we just thank God that we can still serve him. Amen. Amen. Uh, Lord, tell you or not, we want to just share the word of the Lord and we want to be encouraged and built up in the word of the Lord. Yes. If you have your Bibles, I would like you to follow with me in the book of James, chapter 2, from verse 18 to 20. I want to speak today on how faith how faith and obedience are interlocked. That means faith and obedience works together. And, uh, and as we look at the scriptures, we see many, many examples in scripture of how God would require of the people to have faith and to believe in him. So we're looking at James chapter 2 verse 18. It says, but someone will say, you have faith, and I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith, but by my deeds. You believe that there is one God, good. Even the demons believe and shudder. You foolish person... Do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? 
Now, it seems like a very tough statement that is there. But the emphasis of the scripture is that faith that does nothing is worth nothing. Faith that does nothing is worth nothing. How many times have you seen people that talk a good game but do nothing? How many times have we seen people that have good ideas but it never materializes beside beyond saying, beyond speaking, there is no doing. And in the book of James, Paul, uh, or the, the, the writer of the, of the book of James, is encouraging us that faith without works is nothing. Faith without doing anything is worth nothing. At some point or the other, we have to step out in faith. How many of you have got a word from the Lord that the Lord has instructed you to do something, but up until now, you are still procrastinating? How many times have we heard people say, God said them to do something, and you ask them, when are you going to do it? They say, you, I'm praying about it. How many times have you did the same thing? Yeah. You have been praying, you have been fasting, you have been waiting upon God, and then God instructs you to do something, and then you go back and you say, I'm going to be praying about it. In, in Exodus chapter 14, verses 15, the Lord speaks to uh, Moses, and he tells him to tell the people to stop praying and start doing. There comes a time when you have to start to take the word of the Lord, take God at his word. The moment we start, we stop obeying the word of the Lord and we start, we start to walk in disobedience. And when we, when we start to question the word of the Lord that God has spoken to us, we question the very sovereignty of God. So what are you doing? When, when you say to somebody, God told me this. And yet you go on the other hand and you say, I am praying about it. You are doubting, did God say this? And when you doubt that, you're not just doubting the statement. You're doubting the very essence of God. That means God says, I'm not a man that I should lie. Yeah. Nor am I the son of man that I should repent. So God is saying to us, we have to take him, take every step by faith. We have to believe in him. We have to take the decision to start to move forward. Fear and doubt keeps us from taking steps forward. But when we walk in obedience, that's why I said faith and obedience are interlocked. By this I mean, Abraham gets a word from the Lord to leave his father's house. He's going to make him a father of many nations. He says, I will take you to a land that I will show you. Having the word was one thing. But obedience to the word is demonstrated when you begin to take the step. When the day Abraham left his father's house, not only did he step out in faith, he stepped out in obedience. Many of us have a word on the Lord for our lives. And that word will not be realized up until we take certain steps of faith. Many of us are waiting for a guarantee. Some of us are like Gideon and we put out a fleece before God. And we're saying, God, if the, like Gideon did, he says, if, if, if only the fleece is wet and the ground around it is dry, then I know you are God. 
The next day he comes, the, the fleece is wet, the ground is dry. He says, God, no, and the next time is if the fleece is dry and the ground is wet. How many of you have done the same thing? Some of us, the Bible says, Jesus speaking to the nation of Israel in Jerusalem, he says, you have not discerned that which belongs to your peace. He says, you haven't discerned the day of your visitation. There are certain things that God has said to us. I heard uh, Pastor John share this, and one of the statements he made when he was, he was speaking on another sermon, but uh, one of the statements he made, he says, in the book of Hebrews, we have the, 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 the heroes of the faith, but he says, you know, each one of them had an assignment which only they could do. No one else in scripture would God ever ask to offer their son as a sacrifice. It was only the test for Abraham. No one else did God say, build me an ark. And there has been numerous floods since the days of Noah. But no one else did God say, build me an ark. The assignment for your life can only be completed by you. How you handle the assignment for your life will determine what will happen for those that come after you. So the consequences of disobedience not only affects or influences your life, but it affects and influences the lives of of the generations that will follow after you. Therefore, the challenge tonight is walk in faith. And in walking in faith, walk in obedience. That means the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Walking in obedience is another dimension of this. That faith is not just saying I will do something. Faith is doing it. Faith is not is not just believing in something, faith is living it out. Faith and obedience are interlocked. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What God, what God entrusts you to do, he will provide for. Amen? Amen. That means when God gives you a dream and God gives you a vision, God will give you the provision for it. But we need to understand that we need to walk in obedience so that the word of the Lord can have its perfect will in us. But how do we obey God? We need to learn how to obey God immediately. Amen? Many of us struggle with the aspect of delay and the aspect of procrastination. I can tell you I'm guilty of it myself. I procrastinate. Sometimes there's things that I should do quicker. I take time. Now it's not a bad thing to sometimes to just stop, look and listen. But the problem is when you have the guarantee of heaven and you're still stopping, looking and listening when God is expecting you to act. I'm speaking to you, when God speaks to you something, obey immediately. When I look at scripture and I look at those that obeyed immediately, I see the results. Amen? Amen? You see the results. You, when the blind man comes to Jesus, and he, play, he spits on the ground, and he makes clay, and he puts it on his eyes, and he says, go wash in the pool of Silo. The man didn't sit there wait for someone to lead him to the pool of Silo. He went immediately and he washed. And imagine there's not just one pool in the area, but there was a specific pool that he had to go to. And he went, a blind man finds the pool. The blind man went looking for the place immediately. You see, when there's an urgency in your heart, yeah. you will obey immediately. Amen. 
The challenge with many of us is that there's no urgency. There's no desperation. There's no deep seeking for God. There's no saying, God, if you don't show up now, I won't make it. If, I, if you don't show up now, I'm finished. You see, the blind man, he understood his miracle was attached to his obedience. Yes. His miracle was attached to him taking the step of faith. Yes, it's spit and mud, but nobody has touched him like Jesus did. Nobody had to, uh, came to him and said to him, go wash and you will be able to see. No one could give him that guarantee. But there was a man, there was a man of God full of the power and the grace of God, the Son of God, the Messiah, that came to him and says, go wash. We are challenged today to obey immediately. When God tells you something, do not doubt, do not procrastinate, do not delay, do not question God. Obey immediately. Psalm 119 verses 2. Annie, would you read that for us? Blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek him with all their hearts. Verse 60 of the same, Psalm 119. I will hasten and not delay to obey your commands. I will hasten and not delay to, to obey your commands. The Living Translation says we will hurry and we will be quick. To obey God. Amen. Faith is obeying God even when you don't understand. Is there anything that you have been, God has asked you to do and you have been delaying and you have been procrastinating? My challenge to you today is take the step of faith. Now, many of us are, are parents that are here in the in the church today, and some of you watching me are parents. And how often have you sometimes went to your child and you said to them to do something? And the first thing children ask you is, why do I have to do it? You say, and then what do you answer? Your responsibility. You say your responsibility? But have, you, have any of you ever said, because I said so? Yeah. <laughs> As if the thing is that it didn't need any more explanation. It's just because I said so. You do it not because you feel like doing it. You do it not because you want to do it. You do it because I said so. <coughs> Why can a parent say, because I said so? Not because it's the right thing to say. Not because it's the only thing to say. But the reality is, you've got a, you've got a perspective that the child doesn't have. Because you've lived through some things. You've experienced some things. And maturity has told you that there are certain responsibilities that will cause certain development to take place even in the life of the child. So when the parent says, because I said so, it's not out of arrogance. Mm -hmm. The parent says it because their perspective is different, because they've lived enough to know that involving the children in some responsibility in the house will teach them some life lessons. Yeah. So your parent is not saying so because they want to punish you. The parent is not saying so because they want to hurt you. But the same is true for us in response to our Heavenly Father. When he tells you to do something, do you ask, why? Why must I do? And sometimes, when you ask why I must do it, must I do it? He's answering because I said so. 
And when he's answering because I said so, it's based on the fact of who he is. Yeah. Yeah. He's the Alpha and Omega. Amen. Amen. He is the one that knows the beginning yeah. from the end. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's the one that has a different perspective than we have. Yeah. And he is telling us, because I said so. But you see, the thing is that when there is a delayed, a delayed obedience, we are basically questioning the integrity and the sovereignty of who God is. Delayed obedience is the same as disobedience. Amen. Amen. Delay obedience is the same as disobedience. Amen. Amen. Now, how many times have you sometimes asked a child to do something and sometimes they felt like they didn't get you? They act like they didn't get you. Is it? Sometimes they act like they didn't hear you. Sometimes they act like you, you, you're talking to someone else. And it's only them in the room. You know that? They say, who, me? And there's only one person in the room. I, yeah, I mean, Joyce is the only but other child in the house. So there's no other child in the house. So if I'm saying, go and do this, who else am I going to ask? When he acts like he can't hear, you know, the old people says he hears, ears are full of wax. <laughs> oh, he acts like, oh, who me? <laughs> like, you know, it's like, almost like, you could have asked anybody else to do this. Why are you picking on me? Sometimes, we act the same when God speaks. Who me, God? And in a way, our disobedience, our delay, is a reflection of our spirit of disobedience. So when God tells you to do something, do it. Don't question. Don't doubt. Just do it. Amen? Then, the second element of it is when you obey God, obey God Completely. That means the, the Bible challenges us that we must obey God immediately and then we must obey God completely. That means we do not pick and choose when we're going to obey God. We obey God immediately and we obey God completely. That means this is the challenge that many of us have. Some of us says, no, we, we, we will do this, but not that. This is okay for me, that is not okay for me. We'll do certain things that the scriptures say, and the other things we won't do. God is requiring of us to obey completely. Amen? Partial obedience is disobedience. Verses 4 of uh, Psalm 119. You have laid down precepts that are to be fully obeyed. Amen. That means he's saying, Lord, you have gave me precepts or orders or laws that must be obeyed completely. Fully. Amen. That means when you obey God, you have to understand that there are certain things that are true about God. God has a standard of right and wrong. And it does not change. Yeah. Amen? Amen? God's perspective of truth doesn't change because circumstances, trends, culture, the world changes. It doesn't change. God doesn't change because popular trends change. He says, I'm God and I change not. The second thing about God, why should we obey him completely? is because God has a bigger perspective than we do. God sees things different from us. 
The Bible says his ways are past finding out. His ways are not our ways. His neither is his thoughts our thoughts. Amen. That means you need to understand God doesn't think on your level. Don't think, don't, 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 don't treat him like your, like, like your friend, like your, like your buddy. The, 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 the slang you're like your gazi. You know, no, he's, not, he's not your, he's not on your level. He's on a different level. And this is important for us to understand. You know, one of the oldest temptations in the Bible is not lust or gluttony. It's not unfaithful or lying. The oldest temptation in the Bible is doubting the word of God. And it started with Eve in the garden. When Satan came to her and he said, eat of this fruit. You'll be able to live forever. And she said, no, we cannot eat of it. God said to us not to eat of it. And what does the first thing Satan did? He says, did God say so? Yeah. Mm. When you doubt, that's what you're doing. When you doubt, you are, you, you, you are, you are feeding into the temptation that even Eve succumbed to. We are feeding into the temptation and we are doubting God. I'm challenging you today, doubt your doubts. Yeah. Don't get doubt God. If anything, live for God and believe Him. Amen? Amen. Obey God immediately, obey God completely, obey God joyfully. Amen? Whatever we do, we must do it joyfully before the Lord. Amen? When we obey God with joy in our hearts, there's an excitement, there is there, there, there is a, there is a, we demonstrate our love for him. Amen. This is important. Whatever we do for the Lord, there should be an element of doing it with joy. When you're serving God, serve God with joy. Amen. Well, no matter what you are called to do, even in the house of the Lord, when you're serving God in the house of the Lord, do it with joy. Amen. Don't do it out of a sense of obligation. Do not do it out of a sense of duty. Don't do it out of a sense of that you expected to do it. Amen. Jesus was not expected to go to the cross. He went to the cross willingly. He laid his life down for us. Whatever we do for God must be done out of a sense of joy and out of love. 1 John 5 verses 3 speaks about when you love God, you do what he tells you to do. Only when you do what he tells you to do, then the Bible says you will be my disciples. Amen? Amen. Have you ever thought about how does God measure your love for him? Have you ever thought of that? How does God measure your love for him? He does it simply like this. God measures your love for him by your obedience. If you love me, feed my lambs. If you love me, feed my sheep. Amen? That's what he said to Peter. If you love me, God measures your love for him by your obedience. The second thing, he looks at it in John 14, verse 15. He says, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. He measures your love for him by your ability to obey his instructions. Amen? Amen. As parents, you know this. You feel loved and respected when your children obey your instruction here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When your children do mm -hmm. what you ask them to do. Mm -hmm. Listen. Yeah. You feel loved and respected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The one thing if we, if we go into a hus uh, understanding marriage, 
The one thing about if you want to get a man's attention, show him respect. Yeah, yeah. If you show him respect and honor, mm -hmm. that's how you get yeah. a man's attention. For a woman, you have to show her that she's protected, that she's special, mm -hmm. that she's unique. You'll get, mm -hmm. you don't even have to ask for food. Yeah. You'll get it, sir, to you. Amen? This is important. Yeah. We forget sometimes things that are important. God asks us to obey him and he looks at us obeying him by us, uh, by firstly by loving him, by obeying his instructions. How do we obey God? Not just once in a while. We obey God continually. Don't obey God only when it suits you. Obeying God is not just a one-time event. Amen? Amen. Now, uh, Psalm, chapter, uh, Psalm 119, verse 112. It says, My heart is set on keeping your decrees to the very end. Now, the Living Translation says it like this. I am determined to obey you until I die. Verse 33 of Psalm 119. Verse 33 says, Teach me, Lord, the way of your decrees, that I may follow it to the end. It also, another translation says it like this, Just tell me what I should do, and I will do it. I will wholeheartedly obey you for my whole life. Amen? Amen. When should I obey God? Not when it suits me. Not when I feel like it. Not when things are going right for me. Not when I'm getting blessings on every corner. It's even when I'm in my valley. It's even in the darkest moments of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Even when I'm believing and yet all hell is breaking yeah. loose against me. I'm obeying God. Amen? Amen? Obey God with your whole life. With, in Him do I live, move, have my being. I, I, I love Him with everything inside of me. Mm -hmm. I obey Him with everything inside of me. You see, there's dimensions of faith. Faith is just not name it and claim it. Faith is just not just declarations. But faith is action. Yeah. Faith is, is coming to the place where it has to become part of an innate characteristic of me where I obey God. Yes. Amen. This is important. We should obey God rather than man. Amen. Obey God rather than man. Every day we should keep on walking in obedience. Uh, the question I want to ask you is that are you obeying God? Are you obeying God in your relationships? Are you obeying God in your life? Are you obeying God in your finances? Are you obeying God in even for young people in your dating relationships? Are you obeying God in your business? Are you obeying God at your workplace? Are you obeying God in your family? Every aspect of your life, are you obeying God? You ask me, Pastor, what does it mean? It means faith has to have its perfect work in you. Amen. Not in just your spiritual life when you come to church, but in every aspect of your life. Faith without works is dead. Is dead. Faith with, with, uh, with, without doing anything is worth nothing. I want to challenge you to take the next step in faith. Obey God. Bring this into your life. You will see the hand of the Lord in supernatural ways unfold even before your eyes. Let's just bow our heads together. I just want to praise Him today. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good.
Lord, you are good. Lord, we will not delay. We will not procrastinate. Lord, we would we would have hearts of gratitude yes, God, yes, for God. all that you have done. Yes, we will not serve you grudgingly. Yes. We will not serve you, O oh God, out of a sense of yes. duty or out of a sense of obligation. Lord, you, you, you have given us life and you have given us strength. You have given us the ability to hope in you. Yes. And so today, Lord, as we come before you, we, we, we take the first step. We take the first step. I want to challenge you today. Take the first step. You know, sometimes uh, faith looks like uh, 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 God is just waiting for you to take the first step. Many of us are waiting for God to take the first step. But God is saying, if you would take the first step, I will show up. I will manifest in your life. Amen. And tonight we pr I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Let us become a generation of people that are doers. Yes, Let us become a generation of people that are obedient. Yes, we are obedient to your will yes, and to your way. Yes, In the mighty name of Jesus. Praise Just we give you the praise, you, the glory, and the honor. Amen.